Welcome back to our series where we create a blog in Blazor. Now in the first video we set up the application in Visual Studio. If you haven't seen that, check that out now. And in this video we'll be integrating Entity Framework into our Blazor application. If you want to follow along at home, you can do. You can download the code and the database. The link is on the screen for you now. So now we're going to integrate Entity Framework into our Blazor application. First of all, I want to talk you through some of the packages that we're including in our Blazor application. We've got Entity Framework Core. Obviously, we need the main Entity Framework Core package, otherwise it's not going to work. We've also got Entity Framework Core.SQL Server. And this allows us to integrate SQL Server into our Blazor application using Entity Framework. We've also got Entity Framework Core.Tools. And what we'll be using from this will be the migrations. So this allows us to build up our entities within our Blazor application and then migrate them over to our SQL Server database. Now I'm going to talk you through some of the entities that I've created. Now I've created this base class. This stores things like the ID, created, last updated, and deleted. We've also got this on model creating method as well. And what this will do is with entity framework, it will basically store the ID as the primary key. Now all our entities will inherit this base class and the on model creating method will always be run for each entity. We've also got an I base class which basically mirrors what's in base class. Now we've got our post class, and this will store all our posts for our blog. We've got the title, content, enabled, and published. It inherits the base class. We've then got our category class, and this will store all the categories for our blog. Inside there, we've got properties of name and enabled, and once again, it inherits the base class. Lastly, we've got a post category, and this is where the posts and the category can be linked up. Posts can have more than one category, and we've stored the onModelCreating method in here, and this basically links the tables together, so SQL Server knows how to link each table. Now we're going into our DB context. We've got our constructors here that pass in the configuration, and we're overriding the onModelCreating method. Now, what this does is that it gets the current assembly and uses reflection. So it gets all the types, with all the interfaces with iBase, or all the classes that have an interface of iBase, and that they're a class. They're not abstract, so we don't want to include the base class in this instance, and they're public. So it goes through and looks for the onModel creating static method. If it can find it, it then evokes it for that particular type. It will also look for a base on model creating method. So for each type, it will run that base on model creating. So it can store the primary key, as you can see there. If it can find it, it will invoke it. We're also overriding the on configuring method. And all this is doing is basically using the SQL server so we can store our connection string, which we'll get from the app settings. And one final thing is that we're overriding the save changes async. All this is doing is it's looking at Entity Framework's change tracker property. It's seeing if each entity is an iBase. If it is and it's added, it will basically populate the created date to today's date. And it'll do the same if it's being modified. So without that out of the way, we now need to add our DB context into our Blazor application. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pass in empty options. And the reason being is that we also need the second parameter, which is service lifetime transient. I'll explain later on in the tutorial why we're making it transient. The next step is to add our connection string to our app settings. And lastly, we need to create a database. We haven't got one at the moment. So let's open up SQL Server, create a new database. Let's call it Round the Code Blazor. 
And there we go, our database has been created. The next job is to use migrations to migrate our entities over to our database. We go to NuCat Package Manager, Package Manager Console. We now need to add a migration. So we use the key term add migration, give it a name after that, call it initial. There you go, as you can see, our migration has been created, ready to be imported over to the database. At this point, it hasn't actually been migrated over. We need to run a separate command for that. And in order to do that, we can do update database, press enter. And there we go. Our migration has now been applied to our database. If we open up our database, we can see that the tables have been created for us. So we're just gonna add a dummy record in for category. Let's call it my category and enable it. So we've got that. Our final test is we wanna make sure that Entity Framework is working properly in our Blazor application. So we've created this dummy record and now we're gonna try and get that dummy record into our index Razor component. So in order to do that, we need to open up our index Razor component and we need to add some code. So I've made a few changes here. So we're importing some assemblies here. We're importing Entity Framework Core. Um, we're also importing in data and data category section. That's where our entities are stored. And we're injecting the DB context into our Razor component. And what this is doing is that it's basically using dependency injection to inject it into the Razor component. So we've got our code section here and we've got our uninitialized async. We're overriding the Razor component with that. And what we're doing in here is we're basically saying that we've got a category, we're storing a category as a property, we're using our entity framework, our deep, we're building up a DB context with type of category, the first one that comes there with ID of one and we're adding the name to it. So we're storing the name in the category. So let's give that a run and see if it works. So there you go, as you can see, Entity Framework is set up successfully with Blazor. We've got, we're pulling back our category. The category is my category. So the reason why we use Transient over Scoped when using Entity Framework is because Blazor uses asynchronous methods quite a lot. So what happens is that multiple threads can hit the DB context at the same time, causing an error. I explain it a little bit more in my video using Entity Framework in a Blazor server application. You should go ahead and check that out. Now in the next video, we're gonna be integrating our queries. We're gonna be building up our queries to use in our Blazor application. And for more articles, more .NET articles, visit roundthecode.com. Subscribe to my YouTube channel at roundthecode.com forward slash YouTube. And follow me on Twitter, it's at roundthecode. And I will see you on the next video.